Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. Today, we are talking about one of my favorite topics, how to work smarter using neuroscience. When I personally first created a workshop on this topic, which now became a permanent part of W Squared program, it was for a very selfish reason. A few years ago, I personally was on the verge of breakdown. I'm a business owner. And one day, I just realized that as much as I loved my work, I felt like I was drowning. I was doing just so much, but there was always, always more to do. And everything I was doing seemed to take me forever and there was no end in sight. So something had to change. And you probably have experienced something similar dealing maybe with an avalanche of emails. Maybe it's meetings, maybe it's growing workload, new technology that you need to master. And just that constant feeling of being on and more things to do with the same exact number of hours in a day we had 10 years ago but now things different different unfortunately the most natural response to more work is working more often at the expense of rest and recovery right and mm -hmm. so here, sleep exercise falling to the bottom of the priority list taking us deeper and deeper into this hole where we feel exhausted and happy and doing less than stellar job, let's be honest. And if you've done that, you know deep down inside that it's not effective. And it, in fact, it's pretty damaging in the long term. So today is all about doing things differently by understanding how our brain works and how we can use it, uh, use this knowledge to work smarter and not longer. And if you're joining us live, please say hello. We always, uh, we're always happy to see you and feel free to ask us questions as we go. But before we dive in into content, as usual, I want to introduce my co-host and co-creator of our new employee development program, W Squared Work and Wellness Amplified, Lydia DeFrancesco. Lydia is a wellness expert, speaker, and author who has worked in the wellness industry for over 10 years. And in addition to having an MBA from the University of Ottawa, she's currently in the progress to become a certified workplace health and performance practitioner. Lydia is also a weekly radio host of a wellness segment and is a regular TV guest expert. Lydia has energy and passion for helping people see that there are simple ways to make healthy living your lifestyle. And at the start of our LinkedIn lives, we committed to sharing one new fact about each other during our lives. So today's fan fact about Lydia is that she is a chair of the board for Italian Week Ottawa, and they just wrapped up a very successful 10-day festival and I saw the pictures I saw your speech and you were phenomenal as usual thank you yes it was a lot of work but uh, very happy that it was a big success uh, so it's my turn now to introduce you so Alina is a leadership coach speaker and facilitator she holds a degree in psychology from McGill University she's the creator of the successful empowered to lead program and is also a co-creator with me of W squared program uh, Alina draws from her 10 plus years of experience in the corporate world, helping organizations become better places to work by turning managers into leaders and tapping into innate employee strengths to create a culture of passion and full engagement. And yes, we love to share these fun facts about each other. Mm -hmm. And I am so excited. I even wore my sparkly shirt today <laughs> to celebrate. Um, the fun fact, uh, the amazing, amazing accomplishment that Alina just became an ICF certified coach. So virtual high fives. Uh, it's honestly a huge compliment. I'm so proud of you. And this is one next step in your journey. Uh, Alina, I can definitely relate uh, to what you said. I actually had my own experience uh, with burnout and with, uh, you know, learning how kind of like you, how I needed to work smarter and, and not harder, mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's actually been kind of a life motto of mine for quite a while now. Um, so I think it's so great that we're talking about this. I hear this from clients all the time, right? We have so much to do, not just work, but extracurricular family obligations mm -hmm. and people know that they want to work smarter, but they don't know how to do it necessarily or and they they just don't seem to be able to make that change so can you tell us a little bit about maybe like what is standing in our way of of being able to actually work smarter absolutely and and you know like like i said most of us are continue just to work more even though it's damaging and long we we recognize this we see the mistakes that it's leading to it we feel mm -hmm. the frustration 
And even like you mentioned, even burnout, this is a big problem. But we just seem to keep doing the same thing. And there are three main reasons uh, for that. So most of the most of our behavior is automatic. Habits rule our life, whether we want it or not. This is a we talked about this in a few other LinkedIn lives. Habits are really key to to that, and we we tend to learn from others around us. And when and then when we develop those habits, we just stick to them. And mm -hmm. most of, most of the time, we're just cruising in autopilot without giving it much. So we, we may not even realize that. And there is an evolutionary reason for that. Our brain is wired to use as, lead, as little energy as possible, so it quickly develops habits to automate things. The second one is, and I, the, the, this is, I think, very, very important, is we really don't know and don't understand how our brain works. It's kind of like mm -hmm. unpacking a new shiny <laughs> phone. We have no idea how it works. Uh, true story. Everything's so complicated. Yeah. How do I take a screenshot? Uh, where are the camera settings? And God forbid you switch brands or you go from Android to Apple, total disaster. At oh, yeah. For some of us. <laughs> and if you think about it, our brain is one of the most complex things in the universe. And unlike that new shiny phone, we never get the manual. Right. And and also mm -hmm. we're, all, we're often overwhelmed. But there's no time to addressing inefficiency. Mm -hmm. Most of our uh, time is just spent putting out fires and just trying to stay afloat. There's really no time to stop and question how we work and really plan uh, something else. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh, like I, the phone thing is is so true. Like sometimes I, I have friends and you want to do, you know, you're like, hand me your phone, let me, and then I'm like, it's an Android phone. I'm like, I don't know how to work this. Like you have to make it work for me, right? So I get it. Like our brains are the same way. The overwhelm, that is a key one, right? And I see this in the health and wellness sphere as well, right? Like I see the, my clients having the same barriers to making changes to improve their health. And I actually wanna share another barrier uh, that's related to not working smarter and not being able to get healthy and that's sleep. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot about sleep last week. So if you missed that one, I encourage you to check out our profiles, uh, check out our websites. We have the videos posted there. Uh, really encourage you to listen to that. But basically if you aren't getting enough sleep, it's going to be harder to learn those new habits because like Alina said, your brain is just going to default to autopilot. It's so true. Like when I walk my dog, sometimes if I'm not thinking about it, we'll literally just do the same route, even if I wanted to oh, go a different way, right? Uh, or driving, right? Um, so that's going to be a bigger challenge for you if you're not getting enough sleep. And with less sleep or a reduced quality of sleep, you're mm -hmm. going to have that lower mental alertness and focus. So that is definitely one of the key things I would highly encourage as part of the overall, like, how are you going to work smarter and not harder? But I know you're going to share other neuroscience hacks. And for people watching and thinking, okay, I'm committed. I can't keep doing this, these things the same way. It's not working. What can I do differently? How can I get started? What is the first step? Yeah. And first of all, thank you so much for bringing up that, that sleep episode. It's fantastic because honestly, it is it is at the core of it. If you're always exhausted, yes, we can give you some hacks. But if your battery is already drained, it's much harder to perform at any level, acceptable level and ex especially exceptional levels. So go watch that. I think it I think it was fun. I mean, I know I'm biased, but I think it was fun. And, and there was some practical tips there for sure. Now, in terms of that, that first step, and you know, we talked about the, the shiny new phone and no manual, right? So the first step is to really learn about how our brain works and most importantly, its limitations. Uh, we're not gonna get into the neuroscience lecture, but I wanna mention a few things because once we understand the limitations of our brain, we can then mitigate them. We can mm -hmm. develop tools that will help us get the most out of the resources we actually do have. And our brain is very complex, very powerful, yes, but thinking is a very power, power hungry resource. It's mm. very power hungry activity. So conscious thinking is a very limited resource. If you think about most of the work that you get to do during the day, which includes using your brain, the majority of it happens in the prefrontal cortex, which sits right before, uh, behind the forehead. And our prefrontal cortex is responsible for five functions that we extensively using during the day. It's understanding, it's deciding, recalling, memorizing, and inhibiting all of which if you think about it they're critical for any conscious thought if you think about planning goal setting analysis many mm -hmm. other tasks that you do day to day this is what this is what you use for it one of those five functions however our prefrontal cortex has 
big limitations. Conscious mental mm. uses up resources at a much higher rate than any automatic function of our brain. Uh, you mentioned driving, brushing the, our teeth is another one. We do them without even thinking. We're not using, mm -hmm. we're using another, uh, another part of our brain for any automatic function. And, and that is called basal ganglia. And it's much, much older part of our brain. And it's much more fuel efficient. It's been around the block for a mm, while. Yeah. <laughs> it, it functions at a much better rate. So when we mm. do long routine activities that require us to use any of the five functions, now we have a more limited resource that's being drained every single time we use it. So, so this may explain why when you're mentally exhausted, it becomes so much harder to make decisions or, or control mm -hmm. your emotions or resist unhealthy foods. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it definitely true. is. And so you, <laughs> exactly. And your best quality thinking only lasts for a limited time and just working more or harder is not going to solve it. Since this mm -hmm. is a limited resource, we need to treat it as such. Imagine that um, this conscious power, mental power, is like a battery. You charge it to 100% overnight if you charge it to 100%. Yeah. If you <laughs> not even to 100 And you use it throughout the day. But once it's gone, mm. it's gone unless you rest and recharge. Oh, my gosh. Like, this is making total sense. I mean, I definitely feel the mental exhaustion when I have big writing or content creation days. Uh, you know, my husband has has big mental days. And a lot of times, you know, on a Friday night, you know, both of us are like, what do you want for for takeout? What do you want for takeout? And neither of us wants to make a decision, right? Because it's too much. We've already used all our mental power for the whole over the week, right? We're done. Um, and I, I think it's really neat. I didn't know about this uh, basal ganglia thing that um, stores kind of the old automatic habit things. So that's really interesting too. And it, it makes a lot of sense. And that's why I guess the autopilot thing mm -hmm. just happens, right? Um, I love that you mentioned the need to rest and recharge. I'm curious, have you heard about ultra DN, uh rhythms before? No, I actually have heard circadian rhythms, but yeah. this is a new rhythm that I <laughs> Yeah, it's a new thing that I, I just heard of recently. And it's basically a natural cycle where your body, so your body sleeps in kind of 90 minute segments. Mm -hmm. And this is a similar thing with your with your mental activity. So your body focuses on mental activities for 90 minutes and then it needs a break. So here's the important part about the ultra DN break. It needs to be, or it should be an activity that relieves your stress and relaxes your mind. But a lot of times, you know, we just power through like hours and hours and we're not giving ourselves that break. And even if we do take a break, we might just do an easy work task, which isn't really a true break from work, right? And I know, cause we, and I know you know, cause we're both, we're both in this, right? It sounds scary when you have so much to do, you feel like you can't take a break, but I promise you, that your brain will be much more alert and productive when you do take a break compared to powering through. I have learned this the hard way. I now, uh, not always, but sometimes, especially in the afternoons, if I'm just sitting at my computer and it's not working, <laughs> really my brain is like done, I it, it is much more effective for me to take 30 minutes and have a nap mm -hmm. than to power through. Because once I wake up from that nap, my brain is a little more recharged. It might not be at 100%, but it's, you know, it's up, it's getting up there, right? It maybe went from zero to 50. Mm -hmm. I am much more productive. So I promise you from my own personal experience, this works. What mm -hmm. we can do is use the Pomodoro method, which I know we've talked about before, combined with the ultra DN cycles. So what that would look like would be 25 minutes of focused work, three minutes, take maybe take like a movement break, like literally get up, go to the bathroom, get some water, maybe step outside for sunshine. 25 minutes focused work, focused work, three minutes of break, 25 more minutes of work. Then you take a 20 minute break where you're actually completely breaking from your work. So I'm going to put the challenge out there and I'm going to do this mm -hmm. too. And we can all report back uh, next week uh, and see how it works for you. So I also want to talk about this idea of the brain being a limited resource and mm -hmm. making, you know, we want to make sure that we're using it wisely. So what are some things that we can do to make sure that we're using it wisely? Oh, yeah, yeah. There's quite a few different things. But first of all, I thank you so much for sharing this because I actually have wrote it down 90 minutes. It makes sense because mm -hmm. like you said, it's just that, that 
for you know forcing yourself to power through because we're thinking okay we're on the roll we're gonna get things done and sometimes you know that, that pressure of i have to get this done where mm -hmm. we take a pause to think okay how can i do it in the best way possible not just get it done but mm -hmm. uh, and, and maybe doing it in the best way possible is in a shorter time or higher quality and and sarah just mentioned yes i've been noticing this as well learning the hard way is <laughs> my Sarah, we're all in this club together. I think we're yeah. you know, it's easier to learn on our mistakes, but hey, now let's let's learn from each other on what thing or oh, oh, you mm -hmm. know, let's learn on the things that do work. Now, and you mentioned mm -hmm. you asked what is uh how can we treat it as a limited resource? Now it can be really helpful to think about it this way. So given that the conscious mental activity is a limited resource. Every time you say yes to something that requires you to use it, you say no to something else. Mm -hmm. you know, we're always talking about, hey, you know, I need to, I need to learn how to say no. Well, we're doing it all the time by mm -hmm. saying something. We're actually saying no to something else. And prioritization allows us to intentionally rank tasks in order of importance and say yes to activities that will make the biggest impact. And it's one of the main strategies for working smarter. We mm. all know people that just somehow get more things done in the same amount of time as we do. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's not sense. And it starts with establishing clear priorities in your work and in your personal life as well. Because mm -hmm. you, mentioned, you mentioned, Lydia, that it's the same thing for our personal stuff. It's the outside of yeah. work activities as well. So it's about focusing on the right tasks that move the needle on what's important. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most of us spend the majority of our time focusing on putting out fires and yeah. being hijacked by constant interruption. So we're not in control of our time. So what mm -hmm. happens at the end of the day, we feel drained, we feel unaccomplished, and we feel like we're not making progress on things that could make the biggest impact. So on top of it, we may we may even feel regret and guilt and shame on top of that, which, which keeps mm -hmm. draining resources as well. Now, in That's terms of good. prioritization, there are a few things that you can do to focus on the right task. And it starts with simply asking yourself, taking that moment and saying, which activities or tasks will have the biggest impact? Mm -hmm. And you're doing this at work because it requires you to, you, you may have so many things on your plate and you have to decide what to tackle on first. Involve your managers in that. They have, they are the bridge between the bigger company goals, the team goals, and your goals. So use that resource to help you sort through them and rank things in terms of importance. And if you have a hard time uh, prioritizing, there is another helpful question that you can ask yourself. If I had no choice, absolutely no choice, but to cut my work day in half, mm -hmm. that you have no, no, no control over it. <laughs> yeah. What would I do? What would I that's, do? A, that's a great <laughs> question. I love that question. So good. Yeah. yeah. Nice. The, the, the second one, the second one is use good old pen and paper. Our mm. brain is great for generating ideas. It just keeps generating ideas all the time, but it's not so great for storing them. It's mm -hmm. when you keep ideas in your head, it takes away your mental space and it creates that feeling of stress and overwhelm, and it just slows you down. Think of it like as having mm. so many different tabs open on your computer. You want oh my to. God. Some of those. <laughs> yeah, let's not talk about the tabs on the computer. <laughs> I think I think someone's guilty of having too many tabs open. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what I thought. But not a good thing. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. So when you download the information from your head on the piece of paper. You can mm. see it in front of you. It's much easier to compare, see the connections, and actually sort through them, highlight things that are urgent. You know, I have 20 things, so which three of them I can tackle first, right? So you can, mm -hmm. you can highlight, and you just it just calms you down. It really reduces your level of stress, and it can help you decide on which tasks require your immediate attention, which can be delegated, which you can say no to at least for now and once you decide on the priorities for the day schedule these tasks for you know for the time when you have the most mental energy it's either mm -hmm. first in the morning when your batteries recharge or when you know, Lydia you mentioned maybe after a break or physical exercise or a nap where you mm -hmm. have a chance to recharge them and now I know that we have, we have talked quite a bit about working smarter you know you and I and you have your own personal strategy when it comes to working smarter. So can you share that with us? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I, 
First, I have to preface that what I am going to share is uh, something that I am always still having to learn and practice and continuing to make an effort on. Because like I just said, I am part of the like 1 million tabs in my browser and I even have more than one browser open and more than one browser window. So anyway, many tabs. Um, but I yeah. know that when, so I'm gonna talk about multitasking. And I know, I can tell you, I know that when I really make a conscious effort to close all the tabs or just open one fresh new window where I only see the one thing that I'm working on, I absolutely am much more productive. Fact, period, the end. So I, I'm definitely a believer in single tasking, but that doesn't mean that I do it perfectly. So please do not get that impression. <laughs> Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, I think just how our society with like the sort of everyone has ADD now, basically, because of all the medias and all the bings and the dings and the notifications and all that kind of stuff happening. Um, but when you do try and do one task, it does make a difference, right? And there's reasons for this. It's actual research and science, right? When we attempt to do two cognitive tasks at the same time, our cognitive capacity drops to a level of an eight-year-old. Like that's crazy, right? And so when, make sure like to be clear on this, I'm not talking about like drinking water and writing or like, you know, doing the dishes and, and talk, having a, a meeting or a conversation, right? Those are not necessarily really cognitive tasks, but when you're trying to do like send an email and write a report, like two very, very strong mental, like the brain power that you were talking about, it doesn't work, it really doesn't. And so, you know, another study shows that there's a 20% drop in performance without actually saving time, right? So we think that we're saving time when we're multitasking and we're no. not. <laughs> and then another, I, I sound like I'm like super full of bad news right now, but I just wanna make the point that this multitasking is a myth, it doesn't work, right? Uh, another study showed that when we multitask, it actually keeps our bodies on a higher alert. It increases our stress level. Um, again, that's gonna drain our batteries it's going to increase in adrenal uh, function, which turns into dysfunction, long-term stress is issues. Uh, you also have an issue with um, long-term memory when you're multitasking more, right? So, and I know I see this too, for sure. You know, if I'm trying to do too many things at the same time, having multi a conversation while I'm doing something else, I don't really fully remember what's being said. Like, sorry to, to <laughs> say that out loud, right? So you really want to try and just do one single task at a time. It it actually is going to save you time. It's going to reduce stress and it's really going to increase the quality of your work. And I know um, another thing in terms of helping, let's say, with the myth of multitasking and trying to do multiple things at once, one of the things that you kind of I've noticed about you is that automation is like a, a hobby for you. You're like a little automation addict. You're like, how can I automate all these things, right? And I think that's so great. And I know that's one of your personal uh, working smarter strategies. So I I would love to hear more about it. Someone's just commented about the billion tabs. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that it's a reminder. Uh, trust me, I need to remind myself all the time. So we're yes. all in this together. We're all <laughs> going to support each other in um, not being part of that million tab open club. Um, yeah. Alina, tell us, tell us about automation because I'm a big fan of, oh, yeah. you know, learning more about how I can automate things in my life for sure. Yes. And first of all, thank you so much for your responses. It's really nice to know that we're not alone and that it's useful to someone. It's the biggest, the, the biggest thing for us to, to see that this is helpful. And mm. I, I, love, I love that we use science to debunk multitasking because I see it all the time. Still, I talk to mm. leaders multitasking is being seen as the strength it is mm -hmm. not a strength it's actually it's a it's it's proven and when i do exercise i have a little exercise that i do during my workshop that people can actually oh. feel it in 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 real life that they're just not uh -huh. multitasking and it's so refreshing and i hope that mm -hmm. media her use of science scared you and not, <laughs> not to multitask and scared you into unitasking or single tasking. Mm -hmm. We need to start, mm -hmm. club, you know, instead of the billion tabs open club, let's, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's start the multitaskers, uh, <laughs> recoverers. Yeah, club. yeah, yeah. <laughs>
So now I, you mentioned automation and automation is probably my favorite strategy. I automate anything as you mentioned. And remember how in the beginning I said that, that our brain loves saving resources, our brain mm -hmm. loves automation. So it really is working with our brain and not against it to, mm -hmm. to get them done. So mental automation is what allows us to type our thoughts without even looking at the keyboard. <laughs> or talk to family members as we are making our daily coffee. So there's the mental automation, creating routines, patterns, rituals, help us move the tasks out of the brain the area that requires a lot of resources to the area that is much more economical. So it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. Better mm -hmm. yet, whenever possible, use technology to do the automation for you to, to save even more time and even more resources. So anything... Mm -hmm. Anything that you do repeatedly that doesn't vary much from time to time has the potential to be automated. Um, there's three main ways to do it. You can automate through habits. So morning rituals like brushing your teeth, making bed, drinking that warm glass of water the first thing in the morning. That's an example of morning ritual. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe if you're trying to get fit using a treadmill desk when you work and it can help you to get that 10,000 steps a day without really doing anything extra or or using your, your discipline or, or your battery. Or mm -hmm. monthly one-on-ones -on -one with your employees, preferably pre-scheduled or maybe days with your spouse. All of those are habits and, and uh, rituals that can help you automate things. You can also automate by using templates and checklists. Maybe mm. have a structured form for your recurring one-on-one -on -one with someone to make sure that you cover the agenda, that you cover the main points, that you don't miss anything. Maybe it's the templated email responses so you don't have to Yes. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> love, love those. Love that. I, Type Desk is one of my favorite tools that allows me to start or even have the majority of my emails that I repeatedly send already done with a shortcut. It just appears, which is magic. Or maybe you have pre-templated month-end reports or checklists to, again, to make sure you don't have to use your mental energy mm -hmm. to remember key things. And finally, you can automate through technology. This is my favorite for sure. Pre-scheduled computer backups or automatically transferring money to saving accounts. Imagine no mm -hmm. extra thinking required. It's just done for you. Uh, Auto-blocking, distracting sites at specific times. Uh, or last time we talked about blocking social media before before bed, let's say, or from 9 mm -hmm. to 5. And I religiously mm -hmm. have to free them up. And it's actually scheduled, so I don't have to take put it on. It just automatically goes on. Or yeah. use the, the, the blue light blocking app that comes up at a specific time, so you don't have to think about this. Yeah. Um, setting up rules in Outlook for automatically sorting and filing emails, using Grammarly app to correct your spelling in real time. Whenever you type it, if you add it, add, add in to your internet browser, it just goes everywhere you go. And mm. even using AI tools to do some scheduling and follow-ups for you, like having, you know, we both use Calendly. Saves mm -hmm. a lot. It's, I oh, think my gosh. can be separated before Calendly and that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i not even exaggerating i think it's just yeah. so much stress out of it and yeah and if, if there's a task that you would love to automate but you don't know how to just google how to automate x and you would be surprised on the stuff that you can find find mm -hmm. and but, you know i have we have just a few minutes left but i really want mm -hmm. to ask you we, we talk about productivity and how to um work smarter at work and and be more effective but what else can you add about automating work smarter ways to approach wellness let's say yeah absolutely i mean that's a great question and i just i love this topic we could talk about it for so much longer like all the things we talk about um i think in terms of wellness honestly it's the realizing that there's big key things that you can do that make a huge difference and but i say a big key thing it's actually a little thing so the thing like things like drinking enough water in your day if you are not drinking enough water you are not like your brain is is actually mostly water and we need to basically keep it hydrated um you know and and it's going to help you keep you more alert and i mean there's so many other benefits of water i can't get into right now but even something like that even just regular daily movement and taking walks like i said taking those breaks going on a walk doing things like that um even just making sure that if, if from a, a food perspective that you're focusing on more about the foods that you can eat and less about the foods that you can't. And don't worry about 
you know, the few sweets and treats and things like that, if you focus the majority of your time on eating healthy, it's going to be okay. I think it kind of goes back to the idea of that I've talked about before about living in the gray zone mindset where you're not trying to be perfect, but you're trying to be consistent. And so for me, that's the smarter way to approach wellness is mm -hmm. more from the lens of just doing the things you already know you should be doing, but doing them a little more consistent, consistently, or at least starting to do them more consistently and then growing the how the consistency looks like, right? Like what that amount of consistency is. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, not discounting the little things, right? And also not uh, worrying too much about some of the other things that don't really matter. Like sometimes people are like, you know, should I eat brown rice or white rice? Well, you know what, at the end of the day, it's mostly the same. So don't worry about it, right? <laughs> Uh, just make the rice that you like <laughs> and resources on making that decision. And you know, and you, and you talk about food, and actually, as you're talking, I, I was thinking, like, how can I automate? That? <laughs> so I'm like, I, I, you know, as usual. So I'm thinking, actually, one of the ways that I'm going to do it, I'm mm -hmm. going. I want to experiment with the food delivery service. You know, like the pre, mm. not pre packaged necessarily, or maybe even that. Yeah. But having you know those those recipe based boxes yeah. where you don't have to totally. make. Totally about eating healthy so hey exactly. you, i just i just got yeah. to say what I'm talking and, to you. and I, I know we're running out of time but i just want to add make it easy for yourself and i know i've talked about this in the past but either in terms of vegetables let's say and i, I can give this, this i always say the carrot example right now i have a bag of carrots in my fridge it's been in my fridge for a week have i eaten a carrot <laughs> nope. and do you know why alina tell me why i have not eaten a carrot because it's probably not washed and cut and ready to go. <laughs> That's right. It sure is. I love carrots. Yes. Have I taken a carrot out of the bag and peeled it on the spot? No, no, I haven't. Very Will nice. I? Nope, I won't. And so this is like the most dumbest, silliest sounding thing, but it is a fact. I know that if I don't, it happened to me this week, if I don't peel the carrots on Sunday, cut them up and put them in my Pyrex container, mm -hmm. I won't eat them. If you yeah. don't have the time, to cut and peel your veggies, buy them. It's more expensive, yes, but at least you'll eat it that way. So this is what, these are just some examples of what I mean by make it easy for yourself. Wow. So if it means doing the grocery delivery or the the box thing, like the HelloFresh or the, or the good food or whatever, oftentimes it, I always say that you're either gonna have a time cost or a money cost on these things. And you just have to decide which it's going to be. So sometimes you want to, you're okay to spend the time and sometimes you just have to spend the money. Um, either way, figure out how to make it easier for yourself because that's really the smarter way to do it. Um, Sarah, yes, the meal boxes are absolutely <laughs> a life changer for sure. And it really does also relate to that decision making like we've been talking about. And when you're too mentally tapped, you can't make these decisions. It's hard to decide because then it's you decide what to cook. You need yeah. to go to the store, you need to buy it, and then you need to make it. But I, the decision yeah. making is the honestly is the hardest part for me to decide yeah. what I'm going to do. It just, yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm really excited to try that actually. Yeah, amazing. Well, thank you everybody for joining in today. We're so excited. And if you're uh, looking for more of our content, we've got it up on our uh, LinkedIn profiles and on our websites. And if anybody's interested in chatting about our uh, employee development program, W Square, just reach out to us. We'll be happy to chat with you and uh, look forward to chatting again in, in two weeks from now. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining and for your comments. It was such a pleasure having that <laughs> having that connection and then speaking, speaking to you through the chat. Uh, thank you so much and really looking forward to seeing you again in two weeks. Take care, everyone.